Good afternoon, everyone. It is a uh, great pleasure to be here with all of you uh, down in the Whaling City. Uh, and it is a great pleasure for me to be up here with uh, great representation from the Baker Polito administration. Uh, it is a beautiful day, and we are all very happy to be here with you. And on behalf of the Baker Polito administration, my name is Matthew Beaton. I am your Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And you might be wondering, why is this guy about energy here talking at the podium? Well, within our, under our purview at EEA, we have the De uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation. And you can see right behind here, that is currently uh, uh, the current um, organization in charge of this state pier. And it is, uh, we, we, have, we have quickly realized under the Baker Polito administration the importance, not only to the city of New Bedford, but for the entire region of this state pier. And it, is, uh, it has gotten a lot of attention from a number of departments uh, with inside of the Baker Polito administration. And uh, thanks to the leadership of the Lieutenant Governor and uh, the folks that are here with us today, we have come a long way in, uh, in, in creating a roadmap for what is the future of our peers. And again, through the Lieutenant Governor's leadership and uh, um, Deputy Commissioner Carolyn Kirk, uh, through the Seaport Economic Council, they have started a state peer working group that has uh, really kind of given us that roadmap of what the future uh, uh, possibilities are uh, to make sure that our state peers uh, continue to serve as that economic engine, engine and maintain uh, good sound economic viability uh, in what is uh, really a, 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 a central element to the uh, working waterfront down here in New Bedford. And again, that serves for the entire region. And, that, and uh, there is great promise and great excitement around the future of that plan. And again, it is thanks to uh, the leadership of Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito, uh, my colleagues in the administration, and uh, all the many great folks uh, at uh, HED, A&F, and Commissioner Roy here. And most certainly, uh, thanks to your great leadership here, uh, both on the lo local lever, le level with the mayor and your great legislative delegation. Uh, many of uh, the members are, who are here and uh, uh, with us from the House, and you'll hear from them uh, soon enough. So once again, thank you all very much for the opportunity to be here, to be able to get things started. And it is my great pleasure to introduce to you a very great friend of the city of New Bedford, your Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it is indeed a pleasure to stand on the state pier here in our great city of New Bedford uh, with Mayor Mitchell. We spend a lot of time together. In fact, last week we were directly uh, behind you on uh, your street here touring the Transformative Development Initiative District. And I, I know that we have one of our six fellows working on that initiative with you to transform the neighborhood that approaches the coastline and the seaport area here in New Bedford. And you're doing amazing things. And I'm really excited to be here today to just continue the momentum that is here in New Bedford and to work with all of you uh, toward your common vision. Uh, this is all about teamwork here, and I'm here as your Lieutenant Governor uh, working with Charlie every day to see this kind of success exist across our Commonwealth. But we have a great team of people that work with our administration each and every day. And as much as the work that the Governor and I do, we couldn't do it without a great team. That's why we have Secretary Matthew Beaton, where he is in Energy and Environmental Affairs. That's why we have Kristen Lepore as our Secretary of Administration and Finance. And I'm going to talk a little about her in a moment. And our, our Assistant Secretary, Carolyn Kirk, our, who does a lot of work because she's a former mayor of the city of Gloucester, understands the importance of the coastal assets and peers like this, and uh, brings a lot of her expertise and vision uh, to uh, the working peers in our Commonwealth. I happen to chair the Seaport Economic Council, and we repurpose this council to do exactly what we're going to announce today, to take the assets like this along our coastline and use them to their fullest extent possible for economic development. And that's exactly what will result from the investment we're making here. I want to thank our partners in state government. I had the opportunity not only to serve on the local level as a selectman, but as a Massachusetts House member. And we have three of our colleagues in the House with us today, Representative Cabral, Representative Strauss, and Representative Markey. And I know the senator is in, uh, 
in, in session today, so they couldn't be here. But you have a great delegation, a delegation that is really in tune with what's happening in this city and why the investment here in this part of the city is so important. And they are not shy about making known uh, what is needed uh, for us to, to do here. And I'm very grateful to have their leadership and their presence here today. And for me uh, to have the opportunity to work with my colleagues who I, on this part of my job as Lieutenant Governor, who I worked with before in the legislature, is really uh, meaningful to me. So I'm, I'm happy to be here with all of you. I know that uh, the D Department of uh, DCR uh, is here today, Leo Roy, and uh, you have a lot to do with managing this asset and making sure that this city gets what they need from your department, and we're making sure that that relationship and partnership is really uh, strong, and we thank you for coming here to, so that people can put a name and a face together with our commissioner of DCR. But this today is really all about uh, the effort that you put forward as a community, uh, looking at this pier and understanding the value that it brings here to New Bedford. Now, as an administration, we get a lot of requests of, of our time and energy and our resources. And when we get a request, we just can't say yes to everything right off the bat. We have to be uh, very cognitive of the, the investment that we're making. Will the taxpayers get a return on that investment? Will those dollars be used by the community to really uh, make sure that it, it gets its fullest uh, value possible? So when the request came in uh, for refrigeration here on this pier to expand the refrigeration, make it more state of the art, make it more available to the importers and the cargo ships that come to this pier with produce from other countries and that are taken from this pier with the use of our longshoremen who are well represented here today and then trucked to their destinations to other places, we had to think about that. We had to think long and hard about that. If we put investments into refrigeration, what kind of jobs are going to come from that? What kind of economic activity will that not only bring to New Bedford, but to, your, to others that are all part of that chain in the economy, from that country that grows that produce, to the shipment of that produce, to this pier, to the unloading of that produce, to a truck, to that truck and that driver, to the destination for a consumer to be able to enjoy that product. There's a lot of economic activity there. So I'm very pleased that I had the meeting uh, with all of the importers in our office uh, in February and that Dennis uh, Peju, the vice president of the organization, you came, you brought the importers, we met and we saw the value. We saw firsthand that there were partners in this project that would make this happen. I want to thank the mayor for, I think it was one of the first things on your list that you brought to my attention when we first met over a year ago, the importance of the refrigeration in this uh, building. And of course, the legislators brought this forward. But when I was at a meeting about two weeks ago here in New Bedford, talking with the community leadership about the safety net and jobs and how important there is there's one person that stood up in the room, Kevin Rose, and you said, if you want to help the people of New Bedford, where's Kevin? Stand up, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. The best way you can help the people of New Bedford is to create jobs, maintain jobs, and help the people in this city work and have the dignity of work involved in their lives that they can earn a good living for their families. And Kevin, I couldn't tell you then, but I wanted to, but we'll announce it today. We are investing $3.5 million in the refrigeration in this warehouse on New Bedford City Pier. So now I'm going to go back to Kirsten Lepore, Secretary of Administration and Finance, because she's the one that has to scrutinize the numbers and the program and the plan to make sure that it's all going to add up and it's all going to provide a return on the investment. And she put us through all of the motions around that to make sure that this investment will work. And that's why she physically and personally wanted to be here today along with all of us for this very important announcement. And my close is that this is a team effort. It's a team effort on behalf of our administration, your local leadership from the mayor's office, 
to your state delegation that's here today and to the people that come to work on this pier each and every day to bring value to this community and value to your families. Thank you all for inviting us to be part of the team and maybe build on the announcement that we're making today for the future success of New Bedford in the greater South Coast area. Thank you all very much. And now, our Secretary of Administration and Finance, Kristen Lepore. And believe me, as Secretary of ANF, I can attest to you that the Lieutenant Governor is a great advocate, not only for cities and towns, but for the Seaport District. So um, I get a lot of phone calls from the Lieutenant Governor every day. But thank you. It's, it's great to be here today. And as a matter of fact, about a half an hour ago, the administration released its fiscal year 2017 capital investment plan, which provides over $2 billion across the Commonwealth. The plan prioritizes funding for maintaining and modernizing our existing assets while also providing some targeted investments for the future. Within these strategic parameters, we, uh, there's five themes that our projects fall within. The first is taking care of what we have. And that uh, means protecting our core assets, maintaining, modernizing our resources and all of our state assets like the pier here today. Enhancing workforce skills and economic vitality to provide tools to help our employers with, uh, to address the workforce needs that they have, but also to provide regional economic development opportunities. To engage uh, and support our communities and to continue to serve as a reliable partner to all of our cities and towns across the Commonwealth to optimize the value of our investments and that means to capitalize on the investments that we're making in order to multiply and maximize the state resources what that we provide by getting um, leveraging private and quasi public resources in return and driving government performance so that the services that we deliver deliver for the public are actually enhanced we are pleased to provide capital funding today for the refrigeration project, which fits these strategic goals. It will have a positive and economic impact, not only for the city, but for the surrounding region. And in addition, it's also a great example of cross collaboration across many state agencies and working with the community, which is something that is very, very important to the governor and lieutenant governor. With that, I would like to turn it over to our deputy uh, secretary, Carolyn Kirk from the Department of Housing and Community Development. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Thank you. Um, the titles of state government always perplex me, and I have three as of today in the last five minutes. Um, I'm going to serve as the MC. <laughs> I do. I'm going to serve as the MC for the remainder of the program, and um, I just want to uh, give you a little bit about myself. I am was the former mayor of the city of Gloucester for seven years. A um, port city like um, New Bedford. It is America's oldest and most beautiful seaport. <laughs> so my service as mayor of the city of Gloucester overlapped with Mayor Mitchell for about three years and we have a friendly rivalry but the things that we have in common are to we face the same challenges, protecting our working waterfronts, to advocate for our fishermen and make sure that these assets are preserved for them as well, and diversifying our maritime economies, which is why we're here today. And so Mayor Mitchell has worked tirelessly on all of these fronts, and he knows that the city needs a very strong partnership with the Commonwealth of Mass, and he has uh, demonstrated that and it is with great pleasure that I introduce Mayor Mitchell. Thank you Carolyn. Thank you very much. Um, I knew you couldn't help yourself. And, uh, <laughs> yes, you may be the oldest, but well never mind. You know what I'm about to say. You know, we are the we are the biggest. We're the biggest, we're the best. Now, let me just get that out on the record. Um, but uh, uh, a word of thanks, uh, actually a word of recognition and then thanks. I mean, there are a number of folks here who uh, have been great supporters of waterfront development 
and uh, of the um, cargo industry uh, and our longshoremen. And, uh, and I just wanted just to recognize a few folks. The first is our port director, Ed Washburn, whom virtually everybody here uh, knows. Ed's done a great job in uh, our push to diversify the port. I just really want to say thanks to Ed for his, uh, his relentlessness. Um, uh, our city councilors uh, who are here, Dana Ribeiro, uh, Ian Abreu, uh, I don't know if there are any other uh, city councilors uh, here today. Thank you for, again for your support. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce President Rick Kidder is here, who's uh, all things New Bedford all the time, uh, making it happen, looking for those uh, potential returns on investment of public uh, dollars, and this is certainly one of them. I also want to thank uh, David Wexler, uh, whom everybody here has gotten to know o over time for sure, but David is the president of Maritime International, which is the, the uh, the port's uh, primary stevedoring company, and it's been there for an awfully long time. But David really knows it's his stuff, and it has uh, has really been able to grow the business here and create job opportunities, the kinds that uh, the lieutenant governor was uh, was talking about. Um, I really appreciate um, um, what Secretary Lapore referred to as uh, cross collaboration among uh, state agencies. Uh, as well as with various levels of uh, government, um, uh, and there's there's uh, there's a lot to be said for that. And this is really it really is a good example, and that's why you see everybody uh, sitting up here because everybody's had a piece in this. This is I've said so many times before. This this eight acres of real estate is the, to my mind, the most uh, valuable and underutilized uh, piece of real estate south of Boston in Massachusetts. It really is. It's the center of the waterfront. It's the center of the downtown. Uh, and if we if we get it right, it will be really the cornerstone of a, a new era of economic growth in, in this part of the city, and it's really really important. So, uh, lots of thanks to go around Secretary Beaton uh, for sure, whose uh, uh, whose portfolio includes this pier, but many other things. That, that great big pier down the street uh, that uh, will uh, ha that also has tremendous potential in the years ahead, and he's been a great leader on helping uh, the, the state navigate the new uh, renewable energy terrain uh, so that especially New Bedford but the rest of the Commonwealth can be really well set up and so I really value that that working relationship as well as with Leo Roy uh, who is the head of the Department of Conservation and, and Recreation who's uh, on board now and really riding that ship and doing a, doing a great job and working with us not just on this asset but as at the, um, the Pope's Island uh, Marina as well. Uh, we want to thank Secretary Lapore for shoehorning this in that's that's really what it was it's uh, there is there are tremendous demands on uh the state capital budget and the state operating budget as well and um we really appreciate having a, a secretary of a f who will listen to the arguments on the merits and find a way to make things happen when it, when projects are really uh, deserving i mean you get requests from everybody and you can't possibly grant them all and we Really appreciate your hard work. Uh, I also really appreciate the hard work of Carolyn Kirk, my good friend, uh, my uh, from time to time foosball nemesis. Uh, I've never won. Uh, well, that's a story for another day. But someone who understands the role of uh, the maritime industries to uh, not only the uh, not only to local and regional economies, but also to the identity of the place, which is uh, it's not something you can quantify, but sure means a lot, uh, especially. You know, we as mayors, we as city uh, city councilors as well, really understand that. That's those, that's the stuff we live and breathe. But if you have a place that has a strong identity, because it's a port, because it's something else that everybody recognizes, people are willing to work for it. And so, uh, working with Carolyn is great. I'm so glad that uh, she is where she is in state government for sure. Um, and I want to thank uh, our local uh, delegation: Bob Cazera, Tony Cabral, Bill Strauss, Chris Markey, for weighing in on this project. I mean, you can have. Um, you can have the uh, the strength on the merits when you make an argument, but uh, sometimes it takes numbers too, and takes people repeating those arguments and and reframing them and saying them another way. And so having that support has uh, has counted for uh, an awful lot. Um, and I want to thank uh, I want to thank Kevin Rose for his advocacy on behalf of the ILA, which has been really instrumental. Your guy has. I want everybody, all the longshoremen here, to know that he's really gone to bat. Uh, for uh, your membership, it really has made a difference. Um, I want to say, save my uh, strongest praise for the, the woman seated to my right. Um, you know, it's it's 
often the case that you go to press conferences and hear about who did what and when and how that was, you know, that made the difference and whose advocacy, uh, you know, saved the day. I, I want everybody here to know what the lieutenant governor uh, did for this project. Um, so, you know, first of all, she listened. Um, yeah, she listened intently, and she's a very quick study. Um, and you know, we pressed the case that this is a, a project that would have uh, a substantial return on public investment, it would, the return being in jobs, and job opportunities, and indirect benefits to the city uh, and to the region. And so, it, but it isn't in her shoes. I think what people need to understand in her shoes that she was getting at, she's not Santa Claus. She's not, she can't bring everybody their, the gifts they wish for. Um, and because, you know, from where she said, she could have said, well, you know, if you're going to get so many ships in here by refrigerating this place, why don't you let the private sector do it? Why don't they step up? They're going to make lots of money. Um, you know, why don't they do it? Why doesn't David do it? Why doesn't the shipping companies do it? Why doesn't the, uh, the fruit companies uh, do it? And I think this is an understanding. Uh, she understood that this is a public terminal. Um, and she needed to know, um, show me the evidence that this is going to, this is going to be Commonwealth money well spent. You know, she, uh, she spends the Commonwealth money like it's her own money, every last penny of it. And so she, so her job appropriately was prove it to me. And so she gave us the opportunity to, to go in back in February after having a few preliminary discussions uh, about it with Baramex, with Dandria Fruit. Uh, to, uh, to and, and David certainly along the way to make the case that this is stuff, this is money that will lead to, that will incite more fruit coming into this port, more fruit, more perishables, and why that, why that mattered. It's not enough just for folks to, um, to, to promise to, to, to do it. It makes sense because of the attributes of the port, its geographic location and, and all that. Uh, and, that, and that there's been a track record of success over the last few years. So with that, evaluating the merits of it, she went to bat for it. She went to bat for it relentlessly in a period where the capital budget, because for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the problems with the MBTA, is severely constrained. So I just want to say, uh, Lieutenant Governor, that you know, we in New Bedford really appreciate the doggedness of you know, your efforts. And so she... and. So, you know, she heard it from me in stereo for a long time, and then when she saw it, Kevin Rose stood up in a meeting at the Boys and Girls Club a couple of weeks ago. I had to swear up and down that I didn't plant you there. <laughs> Out of the blue, he starts talking about refrigeration. I said, no, I had nothing to do with this. Um, let me just talk really briefly about uh, what this means in context. So uh, we have a growing cargo business here in New Bedford. And it's a good thing. And, and these gentlemen and others with them have seen more work opportunities in the last few years because of the growth. Uh, every single vessel we've calculated, every freighter that comes into the port has about a, roughly a quarter of a million dollars in economic impact. And so from a few years ago, we went from three vessels one season to up to, I think it was 17 or 18. Uh, and that's where it sort of leveled off. Um, because it's not refrigerated, um, you can't bring you can't bring perishables in in weather like this or hotter. So, um, uh, so it really limits the season. What refrigeration does is it opens up this place year round, and so more vessels can come in and more people can be put to work. and And the fruit companies and the shipping companies can plan on that, and it makes a difference. Um, and, and so that's that's what's going on here. There will be more people put to work as a result of uh, of this this really key public. Call it a public-private partnership, but key public investment, and it all fits with, in the broader context, our um, goals for the port. The port, this this port right here, is the single most significant economic asset uh, in the state south of Boston. The whole the whole port is. So look, we are. To, Caroline, I need to remind you, the, the, the biggest commercial fishing port in America, but we've also got the biggest processing base. It's the biggest fishing cluster uh, in, the, in the entire country. And so that's some, that is a place where we need to continue to double down, and we will. Uh, but it's also a place, as I was alluding to in my remarks about Secretary Beaton, where offshore wind will take off because of that terminal, because of the, the, the related infrastructure, because of the deep water port, because of our proximity to one of the richest wind resources uh, anywhere uh, on the planet. 
that makes a difference. We have real advantages. The recreational sector is really taking off. The marina is filling up, as, as Leo Roy knows. Uh, the mooring fields are, are filling up because this is one of the few places uh, anywhere in the Northeast where you can pull up a slip, take a launch in for $2, and you have 30 restaurants within a 10-minute walk. It's here. Uh, so, uh, so too, is, uh, it is with, uh, with cargo. This is an easy port to get in and out of. We have great, skilled, competitive labor. We have deep water. We've got a cold storage warehouse now. It all fits together. That's why we can compete. And, and the more we can compete like that over time in each one of these industries will be will have a more sustainable road to growth in, in our local economy, our maritime economy, that will support the kinds of opportunities that we've been talking about. Because that's what it's about at the end of the day, giving people opportunity. So with that, I just wanted to put a, add a little bit of context in there. I want to thank everybody for the, the great teamwork and uh, turn it back over to Carolyn. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're going to hear from the state uh, delegation, and I'm going to introduce them and ask them to come up and uh, say just a few words, two or three minutes. Uh, Representative Cabral has represented New Bedford since 1991, and the state here is located in his district. In speaking about the possibilities for state peer with the representative, um, the conversations come back to two things. One is, how do we protect the jobs that are associated with the cargo shipping. So how do we protect and expand longshoremen, truckers, et cetera? And at the same time, while we're diversifying that economy, how do we protect our fishermen? So I give to you Representative Cabral, who cares about those two things very, very much. Well, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the State Pier and obviously to my district. I mean, I re I'm proud to really represent the entire working waterfront from the north terminal all the way down to the south terminal where eventually the turbines will leave to, to, to be placed uh, south of, uh, of Martha's Vineyard uh, in the near future. But this is a project we've been working on as a team for quite some time, uh, and sometimes uh, projects of this nature takes time. Uh, because, as you remember, we started with a project that possibly was going to cost $800,000, then it went on from eight hundred to a million, and today we are at $3.5 million. And uh, to do the job right, I think this administration, to their credit, uh, uh, to the Lieutenant Governor, the Governor, to Secretary Lepore at a &F, to really look at the numbers and what we're doing here and uh, the exact cost of, of this project. And we think the three and a half million dollars is really what it's going to take to make this the kind of uh, the kind of project that is going to really uh, uh, make uh, this a year-round port for for commodities across uh, the globe, uh, not only from Morocco but from South South Africa, and hopefully down the road from Mexico as well. Uh, so I think this is uh, about in the end of it, it's about jobs, about economic development, and then I know ILA has been a tremendous support of this project. And they've been working on this. Uh, they've been working on this pier, unloading and loading uh, freight since 1928. And uh, we plan to stay a state pier, worked by ILA. Okay, every job. And uh, we also want to thank the Teamsters, because they also are the truckers and the forklifters uh, in this in this pier. So, to all of you, I'm delighted. I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor. I want to thank Secretary Lepore, um, of course, Secretary Beaton, and everybody in the team in the administration that really helped it stay uh, in this announcement. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Um, Representative Strauss has been representing New Bedford since 1993, and he is the House chairman of the Joint Committee on Transportation. So many of our, my colleagues in state government s understand Chairman Strauss in terms of transportation. But one thing that we've learned is his passion and advocacy for this state peer and working waterfronts. Chairman Strauss. Um, the Deputy Secretary is, is being very kind to me. Um, sometimes you hear we try and use these diplomatic terms to 
say things um, uh, about each other and regard to each other. So passion means um, he overdoes it. He gets loud and excited. Um, I think this, uh, the lieutenant governor said not shy. Uh, I'll leave it to you what that means. Um, but I, I will tell you that uh, I know, and there might be reporters here, I don't know. Um, I, I know that it's, it's sometimes um, easier to talk about the way in which uh, elected officials and government officials interact in terms of you know, pitch partisan warfare, things like that. And clearly that does occur, is occurring. But one of the things we've accomplished here in Massachusetts uh, is a uh, mutual respect that uh, while we're doing the people's business, uh, we do the people's business. So uh, with, uh, and it's interesting, I didn't know when I got to speak whether I'd be the first to mention the tallest guy not in the room. Uh, that's the governor. Uh, so with regard to the baker Polito administration, uh, this has been uh, just a fabulous working relationship uh, in general and with regard to this project because uh, everyone has taken the time uh, to simply focus on what's really important, which is, uh, as I was hearing behind me, getting people with job opportunities and uh, more work uh, uh, occurring in this port. So uh, that starts with the governor, who's been very patient about receiving late night texts. Uh, it includes the lieutenant governor, the same, the members of the cabinet, uh, the lieutenant governor and secretary of Beaton uh, uh, served with us. Uh, in the House, and again, without regard to partisan differences, and there's a season where you express those thoughts, uh, this is about uh, having respect for each other and working together, and it's kind of neat to have people who are friends uh, in these positions to help out when we make those calls, uh, as all of us have done. And uh, more recent for me in uh, developing a relationship was with Secretary Lepore. Uh, uh, she's the numbers person. She's, I can tell you, not easy to convince. All discussions, all uh, requests are uh, on the merits. And so uh, for a commitment of over three million dollars at a time when, you know, some were suggesting, hey, you could do it for a lot less, uh, we could do a semi-project, uh, but when she just described to you uh, the, the um, uh, the way in which these things are analyzed to preserve these commonwealth assets and do the job correctly, that's what this job represents. And uh, with her uh, approval, uh, that's, a, that's a big good he housekeeping seal of approval. So I want to thank her. I didn't expect her here because usually the numbers people that uh, say no, right, the people who are in the position, you'd think it would be fun to uh, make decisions on spending money. She's already found it's not, uh, because for everyone you say yes, there are a bunch you say no to. And for her to come today is a special acknowledgement, and we, we appreciate that. And for the Deputy Secretary, uh, who uh, must be rethinking her involvement uh, that she got into with seaport issues, uh, uh, she's been wonderful here, and, and Commissioner Roy has been very helpful. I will tell you with regard to uh, 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 David and I were talking earlier, and uh, we've known each other since before I uh, was a public uh, uh, official. Um, and um, at times um, he can be grumpy, I can be grumpy, and uh, and we've known each other for quite a while. But uh, one of the things we share with regard to State Pier, where we are today, is uh, how this is so important for maritime uses. As you look up here, you can, uh, without shifting your head too much, you can see the diversity of maritime uses that already depend on State Pier, and in my view, uh, will always have State Pier as a home. Uh, we have fuel supply, we have the ferry to Nantucket and the vineyard, we have the shipping, which is going to expand. You see the fishing support and the fishing vessels here. This is a complicated port. It's a complicated machine to make sure that these maritime places have this property that we are on today available to them. And it connects, not just by road, but in other ways to the rest of the world. Our site here today, you see 
what is unfortunately no longer in use, but who knows. Uh, you see the rail track headings. Uh, you drove through, if you came from out of town, the construction site. Secretary Lapori knows the numbers being spent, but right now, 20, 30 something million dollars is being spent to restore and rebuild the, uh, the rail uh, bridge over Route 18. That comes right onto the state's property where the rail is. It's not specifically in the plans, but uh, in addition to the commuter rail, <laughs> she's my friend, <laughs> in addition to the commuter rail, there's freight opportunity by rail as well. So this port has a great future, and without this administration's support, we wouldn't be uh, celebrating so hard today. So I want to thank everybody, and it's a pleasure to be here as part of today's announcement. Thanks. Uh, we have Representative Markey here. He's been serving the district in New Bedford since 2011. And in addition to his responsibilities at the State House, Representative Markey has taken a keen interest in the state assets that are located in New Bedford. The, this pier, the um, South Co Terminal, I don't, which way is South? That way. And the, <laughs> and the other assets that are here. And, and Representative Markey really considers himself a steward of the Commonwealth's assets. Representative Markey? Well, there's one thing we learned is that uh, New Bedford really is a better seaport because the former mayor doesn't know her directions. The sun, the sun sets in the west. When you look to the west, you go to the left, and that's the south. Just make sure you know you're navigational. Uh, so we win on that front. But um, in all honesty, I think um, when you look at this project, there's a million reasons why not to do it. Um, there's not everyone agrees exactly how this should be done. Not everyone agrees who should be controlling it. Not everyone. And quite frankly, why would a governor, why would a lieutenant governor, why would an administration get involved in a local issue where they really don't have to? But I think the lieutenant governor saw the need for this, and she reached out to actually all of us, actually, in the hallway at the State House one day. She ran up to me and said, here's my cell number. Call me. I want to talk to you about the state pier. Um, and that's the stuff we need. That's the stuff we need in government. There's so many negative things you hear about politics and one side or the other. Um, really and honestly, when we get down to it, we're human beings who want the same result. And what we want, hopefully, when you're in public service is to give people the same opportunities that you've been fortunate enough to have. And I think that's, that is the one thing you can say um, about Charlie Baker and Karen Polito and the administration here is is that they get that. They know the, how lucky they have been in their lives. And they know how important it is to be able to come home and have a job and feed your kids and you know let them be in activities and follow up on those things. And those are the opportunities that they want to give the longshoremen. And those are the opportunities that I think that this project does, allows to happen for the long term, not just a short term gain that you know, you can win on some political thing, but truly a long-term gain for our community. Um, and I, I, I laugh at Strauss, who gets up here, and he says, you know, geez, he's, he's sitting next to me, he goes, he thinks Mitchell's taking up all of Montigny's time, because Montigny's not here. <laughs> he keeps going on and on and on, and then he refers to David and saying he's grumpy and him's gr he's grumpy, and then talks about seasonal time to fight it out and do all these things. So I'm going to interpret that quickly. Bill Strauss was being a jackass, Dave's being a jackass, and he had to acknowledge that, and we want to make sure that we all get along and we share the same things. And then come November of whatever year it is, you know, Bill Strauss will be saying negative things about Charlie Baker and the Republicans. However, I don't think that can be the case. I think that this administration has truly done uh, a remarkable job of reaching out to everywhere. I mean, think about it. Um, a Republican governor and a public administration coming to New Bedford, which is three to one Democrat, and saying, I'm going to invest this money here. They could have gone anywhere else. They could have done it anywhere else. 
but they didn't because they know the value of it and they know the importance of everything that you people do day in and day out. So I'm happy to be here. I know uh, I appreciate Matt being here, who was a classmate of mine from back then, and particularly uh, the Secretary of Administration and Finance, who I did not meet until just now. Um, but I do know that the fact that I haven't met her means that she's actually working at the State House and doing things and in, is in that little cubicle crunching out the numbers. But the fact that she's here shows the importance of this project for the administration. And I thank them very, very much and the opportunity to be here. And good luck with everything. Thank you, Representative. And we have saved the best for last. Representative Kuzera, who has uh, represented this area since 1989, representative, and we're running on a tight time frame, so I'm going to spare words, and I'd ask you to do the same. We have um, just a few minutes. Thank you, Representative. Nice to meet you. Good afternoon, and after being in the member of the House since 1989, I think I know how to back clean up and, and, and wrap up. Um, first, I'd like to thank the Baker administration and Lieutenant Governor Polito for responding to our advocacies and to realize that this is a state asset and it should be invested in. Uh, that investment's important to our local economy, for the jobs that it provides, and to the state's economy. And keep in mind that the city of New Bedford, the port of New Bedford, is the state's, the Commonwealth's second largest port behind the city of Boston. So the investment is important to the entire economy of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, as former House colleagues, both Lieutenant Governor Polito and Secretary Beaton, it's a pleasure to see them come down to New Bedford. And we want to welcome your future visits to New Bedford. Hopefully they'll be as productive and as receptive as this one. And Secretary Lepore and Secretary Kirk, we thank you for your presence as well. But I think that you've heard from the tenor of the audience that it does mean jobs. It's important to our economy. We're grateful for it. I'm grateful to see the state's investment in its assets, the New Bedford State Pier. Thank you. Thank you. That does conclude our program. I do want to just acknowledge Michael Esterbrook. Michael, where are you? He, right in the back, he has provided these beautiful photographs. Uh, there was not a ship in port today, so we wanted to bring you um, what, what actually, if you haven't seen the operation down here, how remarkable it is when these ships come in and the activity and the jobs and the work that gets generated. So thank you very much. May many more ships come in.